Okay, so we're gonna review trig functions, or if you've never learned trig functions, you're gonna learn them, right? Because we're gonna to need to use trig functions to solve for vectors as we get further into this course. Okay, so trig functions involve right triangles. So if I draw a right triangle, right, like this, there's one side or one angle, I should say, that's 90 degrees. And then there's two other angles that you kind of get the flexibility to define, right? And so you define it with the Greek symbol theta, right? And I'm defining this angle as the angle theta that I want to look at, okay? I could use this one up here, and it would change where the functions are, but it wouldn't change any of the numbers that I get, okay? So for these sides of the triangle, we need to define them so that we can use these trig functions, right? So this side down here, the one that's touching the angle, see how this angle touches this side right here? The side that it touches, this is the adjacent side, right? Because adjacent means next to. Okay, if you look at the angle, the side that's opposite from it, the one that doesn't touch it, is obviously the opposite side, right? So I have an opposite side and an adjacent side, and then if you remember your triangles, this side here that's opposite the 90 degrees, right? The, the long side of the triangle, this is always called the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse will always be this long side, right? The side that's opposite the 90 degree angle. But the opposite and the adjacent can change depending on where you define the angle, right? So it's important to be able to find that angle. Okay, so the trig functions, right? The easy way, the mnemonic to remember this is using SOHCAHTOA. So SOHCAHTOA stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? It doesn't mean anything, it's just a stupid word. Right? But it's a mnemonic to help you remember sine, cosine, tangent. Right, So those three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, they're defined like this. So the sine of an angle, right, and these are just ratios. Sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, when you do these, these are just ratios. It's the ratio of the length of one side of the triangle to the other. So sine of theta equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Right, So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Ka and then tangent theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So that's the TOA part, SOCA TOA, right? Easy to remember if you do it enough. Okay, so there's also inverse functions to this, right? So the inverse functions are cosecant, secant, and cotangent, right? And there's not a fancy, I'm sure there maybe there is one, right? I don't know. There could be some mnemonic for cosecant, secant, cotangent, but the way I remember it is Tangent goes with cotangent, right? And then cosecant comes first. So it's a little weird because it's opposite. Here it's sine and then cosine. Here it's cosecant, then secant, right? So cosecant goes with sine. And cosecant is one over sine. Secant is one over cosine. And cotangent is one over tangent, right? So the other way you can think of this, instead of one over sine, one over cosine, one over tangent, it's the reciprocal, right? So it's the same thing as saying, instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over opposite. And secant, instead of being adjacent over hypotenuse, because it's the reciprocal, it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent, same thing. Instead of opposite over adjacent, it's going to be adjacent over opposite, right? So however you want to remember, if you get sine, cosine, tangent down, cosecant, secant, cotangent, isn't that hard to remember. Okay, so here's my trig functions, right? Sine, cosine, tangent. I've written out cosecant, secant, and cotangent in their shorthand form that you might see them more often, right? Instead of writing the whole thing out, right? It's CSC, SEC for secant, COT for cotangent. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say I've got a triangle that looks like this, right? Here's my 90 degree angle. And so first off, I need to pick an angle, right? If I'm not given an angle theta, I need to pick one because you can't solve anything if you don't know an angle. So here's my angle, I'm gonna call that theta. And let's say my sides are two and my hypotenuse is eight. And I don't know what this one is. So we're gonna go solve for all of the trig functions. Sine of the angle, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent for that angle, right? So let's start with, let's just go in order. Let's start with sine. So sine of theta is gonna be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, right? So here, opposite is two and the uh, hypotenuse is eight. So two over eight gives you a quarter, so 0.25 is sine. Okay, so let's do cosine. Cosine theta 
is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, we don't know what that adjacent side is, right? So we have to use something else, right? So this adjacent side, I don't know. But it's a right triangle, right? So I can use the Pythagorean theorem. And I know Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So if I want to solve for a, that means a, I can subtract the b squared over, right? <clears throat> so c squared minus b squared. And then to get rid of that square, I take the square root of that whole side. So a is equal to square root of c squared minus b squared. And so that comes out to c is 8. That's the hypotenuse, right? So 8 squared minus 2 squared, square root of that, and you get 7.75. So that means a is 7.75. And so, like I always tell you, check if it makes sense, right? Does it make sense? Well, yes, because both of these numbers have to be smaller than the hypotenuse. This is smaller than the hypotenuse. It's bigger than that one. Makes sense. Okay, so now I can do cosine. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 7.75 divided by 8. And when you do that, it comes out to 0.96. Right? Now we're home free because we got all the sides. So tangent, ugh, can't write today. Tangent theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent side, right? So opposite side is 2. Adjacent side is 7.75. So that's 2 over 7.75 equals 0.26. All right, so there's these three. So now let's get cosecant, secant, cotangent, right? And there's two ways you could do it. I could either go back through, for instance, cosecant, right? I'll do it two different ways. So cosecant of theta, I could say hypotenuse over opposite, right? So I could say eight divided by the opposite side, two. So eight divided by two, it's four. So for secant, let's try something different. For secant, I'm just going to take the reciprocal of what I got for cosine, right? So I'm just going to take my, uh, let's say, secant theta. I'm just going to do the reciprocal of what I got for cosine. So cosine was 0.96. So I'm going to do 1 over, it's 4, 1 over 0.96. And if you do that, you get 1.04, right? And so you check in your calculator, it works the same way. And then same thing with cotangent. So cotangent, we'll go back to the other way. It's adjacent over opposite, 7.75 divided by the opposite side, which is 2. It should come out to the reciprocal of what I got before, right? And that equals 3.88. So there I've solved for all of them. So the key here when you're doing these, right, These it's not that hard. The thing to remember that you may mess up, you have to define angle first because where I define that angle, that's going to determine which side is opposite and which side is adjacent, right? If you do it and you just always call x adjacent, always call y opposite, you're not always going to be right.